Have you ever wondered what separates the highest achievers from the rest of the pack? What's the difference between those who pursue and achieve their dreams and those who don't? My guest today has coached the highest performers in sports and business for 15 years. He's worked with NFL athletes, Fortune 500 companies, and currently serves as the mental condi conditioning coach for the Alabama Crimson Tide football team, works with Coach K over at Kansas State, and is working with both of the men's programs for football and basketball at Michigan State University. Today, Ben's going to break down the mindsets and actions that lead to the highest levels of performance. Welcome to At The Podium. Hello again, and welcome to At The Podium with Manuel Mesco. I'm a financial advocate, a CEO, father, husband, and massive sports fan. I'm obsessed with encouraging people to dream and attack their unique vision for life so that they can inspire others to do the same. We built this podcast to share the stories of high performers and help convert their stories into lessons that help you get closer to your hopes and dreams. Today's guest has built an incredible career helping individuals and teams perform at the highest level possible. Ben Newman is a highly regarded performance coach, international speaker, and best-selling author. His clients range from Fortune 500 companies around the world to business executives, sales organizations, and professional athletes in the NFL, PGA, NBA, MLB, UFC, and NCAA. Ben serves as a mental conditioning and performance coach for the 18-time national champion Alabama Crimson Tide football team. He's worked with Coach K, three national championships at North Dakota State and is with him at Kansas State today. And he has just started working with the Michigan State Spartans, both the men's program for football and the men's program for basketball with greats like Coach Mel Tucker and Coach Tom Izzo. Ben's also worked with Super Bowl championship teams. Real Leaders Magazine selected him as one of their 2019, 2020, and 2022 top 50 speakers in the entire world. He helps individuals and teams connect to their burn, and that's the name of his podcast, and perform at their highest level. And he's here to help our listeners do the same. Ben, welcome to At The Podium. Ben, I want to start with Uncommon Leadership. It was a wall. It's a Wall Street Journal number one bestseller, USA Today bestseller. It's a compilation of some of the most incredible stories and experiences that you've had with some of the people who are closest to you, right? Yeah. Talk, share with our listeners, like when when did it become clear to you that you wanted to take these incredible experiences and stories and share them as a best-selling book in the market? You always want it to become a best-selling book, just just like I want one of those gold microphones. I mean, one of these days I'm gonna have to upgrade. I mean, my guy Manny, I mean, he's one of the sharpest dressed guys in the world, and then he's got this gold microphone when he has me on the show here. So I was so excited to do the show, and now I need like a, a gift for being on the show with one of these that's one it. Of these gold mics. But I'm you gonna know, get you one. <laughs> you you never you never know what's going to happen with a book, right? I mean, the goal is typically what's a message that you believe will resonate with the readers. And I decided, and I know you believe this as well with the amount of coaching that you've had from growing up playing athletics to, you know, being in the business world, that the coaching and the influence and the mentors and the that you, lessons that you learn, like, why don't I share those lessons? You know, cause I sure. think sometimes people achieve success and, you know, you almost read some of these books and it's almost like they did it by themselves. And I, I mean, I still have two coaches. I'm reading books every day. And so I, I wanted to highlight 11 leaders that have had such a significant impact on my life, how I show up, how I make decisions that could then be used to impact other people in their daily lives and how they lead. That, that was really the goal. And then the blessing becomes, you know, a, a Wall Street Journal bestseller. Which, you know, th those are still things, even when I, when I say that, it's kind of, a, kind of a wild thing to think about. Yeah, and you know what? I, I love it. Like, it, it, it starts off with a bang right away. The forward was done by one of your dear friends, Ed Milat. Well, 
how did you know Ed is the one who's going to kick this book off? Well, so Ed, Ed, I'll tell you, is interesting. He and Andy Frisella, who has a there's a chapter about Andy in the book, you know, two individuals that are, are friends. They've had an impact. They're just huge thought leaders in the world today. They invited me during COVID to uh, do a virtual speaking event for their entrepreneurial group, Arate. And I was like, I was the weak link of this speaking engagement. It was Jocko Willink, Marshall Falk, and myself. So I was just like, hey, guys, like, you're going to let me hang out on this Zoom and take notes of those guys when I'm done, right? And so they let me. But there were just, there were things that Ed had expressed. That was really the first time we had spent time together. You know, a couple phone calls here and there. But live together, that was the first time. And there were some things that he said about our time together live to the group that just that really hit my heart and they impacted me. And I started saying some of those things to myself every day. You know, you know, have, you know, us having known each other 10 plus years, maybe 15 years, you know, I'm very intentional in how I show up every day, what I feed my mind to drive my action. And so some of the things that I said, Manny, I started reading it every morning. Mm-hmm. And then I would start to reach out to him more. And we built this real special relationship. And when you're kind of compiling these stories, I said, man, like, I think Ed's the one to write the forward. And then it was awesome when he agreed to do it. And I, I think he really captured in that forward the essence of what we wanted the book to convey. Who 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 do you think? I mean, I, I, I've seen people comment on the book from business, sports, parents raising children. Like, who was the book written for, though? Like maybe describe that the mindset, the appetite, the vision, the the work mm. ethic. Who was it written for? I, I think the if, if you really go back to when I was thinking about the book, right? And you kind of think, okay, what am I gonna do? I want to honor these 11 people and then we'll highlight lessons that I learn and share those lessons and share stories and things that I observe, ways that they've impacted me. And then when you think about the title, like what do these individuals have in common? And <laughs> it's that they are uncommon. And I believe that's a message, this message of uncommon. It's something that I believe is really needed in the world today. I I think there's so much that's protecting society, you know, media trying to protect society, politics trying to protect, you know, it's like everywhere that you look, it's like, there's this protection. It's like, let's have a voice of encouraging people. How about you go and grab all the potential that God gave you and go be uncommon rather than protecting yourself. Like, Let's go get uncomfortable and let's go be uncommon. And I think there's so many people who walk that in life, but I don't know how many people have a voice of somebody who's encouraging them to choose to be that way. Yeah. I mean, that, that, that is a, um, that is one of the things that's always stood out to me about you. You have this sort of like no day off mentality, this like insatiable thirst for (laughs) progress. Right. And and you've talked you've talked to me about this intimately before when when you were coaching me years ago. And it's not it's not perfection. You're just you're wanting to make progress every single day with the intentionality of your efforts, what you give time to, who you give time and attention to. Looking back, looking back at when you first broke into the professional speaking and coaching space, that was oh seven, right? Six was the first time I ever spoke. Oh, six. And you were a three year advisor within financial services, the industry that I'm in. And you were a one percent advisor already in your third year in the profession. When things are going that well, like how was it that they're going that well? And you're still like, that's not enough. Take us through that story, because I've not I've heard the story, but I don't know that our listeners know that story intimately. You're at the top of your game as a financial advisor in financial services. And you're like, it's still not enough. Well, first off, let let, let me take you back because you mentioned it in the bio, which I appreciated is all the work that I've been able to do in athletics. This has been an incredible year for me being brought back to my alma mater uh, and being able to go back to Michigan state and to work with Mel Tucker and to work with Tom Izzo. I mean, these are legendary coaches at legendary programs at my school. And you were really the catalyst through an introduction to Benny Fowler, all my friends who played at Michigan state, you know, the introduction to Paul Davis, it was all these seeds that were planted through you. And so I want to thank you 
Um, as, as part of this answer, I want to thank you for everything that you've done to make those introductions because of your belief in me. But when you go back to those Michigan State days, Manny, I got a 19 on my ACT. Now, <laughs> let, let, me, let me tone this down. I did. I had, I had a 3.6 GPA, but here's what's wild. Back in the day, so in 1998, which was my freshman year at Michigan State, it was a 3.6 and a 19 was automatic acceptance. Automatic wow. acceptance. They wanted people out of state so badly that they were like, yes, we will take your 19. Yet, if you fast forward to today, a 19 on the ACT, they'd be like, sir, we, we can't even cash your $50 check for the application. This is a mistake. Return I mean, to sender. Right, like a return to sender. And so... All I've ever known, and I was just always challenged with test taking. There were things academically that challenged me. So I always had to do a little extra when it came to academics. I had to study a little bit more. I had to find alternative ways to do it. <clears throat> you know, growing up, like nothing was ever good enough for my father. After I lost my mom, it was this double edged sword of, you know, a dad who blessed me by hammering on me <laughs> that what you're doing is not enough. And it was never enough. And I've been blessed to have coaches and mentors to help teach me how to manage the emotion of growing up like that, especially after losing your mom. My parents were divorced when I was six months old, lose your mom to a rare muscle disease. And so all I've ever known, Manny, is having to scratch out that extra. Yeah. And so I know, you know, the listeners are like, man, how did we get all the way back here? But I want everybody to understand, just like for all the listeners, Sometimes your work ethic or, or how you achieve what you achieve comes from the foundation of strength from pain from a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And so to answer your question adequately, I really do have to go back there because that's all I ever knew was the hard work every day. I, I played uh, high school basketball with three guys who went D1. Now, I was a captain. I, I, I had fun. I loved the game, but I, I could shoot, but I was slow. I couldn't jump. Like I was lifting weights every day after practice when everybody was going home to dinner. Like I always did the extra to find the edge. So that's all I ever knew. So when I came into financial services, I was asking the questions and I encourage everybody listening, whether you're an athlete, whether you're in financial services, whether you're an entrepreneur, a business owner, go to people who have come before you and just ask them the questions like, what did you do? How did you get there? What makes you great? And so I sought that research, Manny. And you know what I ended up finding? It was the little hard work compounded over time that created success. And I'm like, perfect. This career is for me. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've heard you speak about the aggregation of marginal gains and it's like just being disciplined and habitual about doing the things that most won't do that, you know, it takes to win consistently. And, and, <clears throat> and, and I've seen you do that with the transformation of your body as well. Talk to us about that. How oh, many days like, in a row have you worked out? 1,188 as of today, but Hey, hold, hold on. I want to talk about your body for a second. And then we, we can go back. I remember. So when Manny and I, he brings me in to speak. And if you've ever been to, I know it's an incredible job that Manny does with the podcast and highlighting unbelievable people. And by the way, I am going to get this in here. So Manny is a sponsor of our mental toughness forum for 2023. Oh, yeah. I mean, the first one, because of how you were moved, which I appreciate it. Cause when you get feedback from a friend, when we've been friends this long and you get feedback, like, wow, Ben, like your team put it together. It was and insane. then to say, I want to be a part of that. I, I think it was such a natural fit with what you're doing with the podium and events that are going to be planned and all the great things you're doing. It was so natural, but I, I'm, I'm just so grateful for that. But I remember like being at one of your events, which are always like perfectly done. You're so meticulous to the details. But what people didn't see was the workout we did that that morning. Now, you're a former college football player. And I remember like you, you come in and you got this like tight shirt on and, and you do like one set and this vein just pops out. And I'm like, man, like, dude, you got to get back to working out because oh, like man. it's natural, like you're an athlete, like you could see it. And I can share with you and, and, and you know this and I think it's great sometimes and you can humble me as much as you want on here. We're going to have fun with, with your listeners. But when I would challenge you to work out, sometimes it was probably like, dude, what? we don't have to talk about workouts. We're talking about growing business. Yet I would see you show up differently, right? Like the more you would work out yes. or the more you'd be intentional at home, 
And the more you tapped into your capacity, the more you were excelling in all areas, right? And it's almost like if for many individuals, if they have nothing to do, it's like it, it's a huge detriment. Yet when you're really, really busy, that capacity, you lock in with this level of awareness. So for me, part of the craziness of the workouts, and I do have a few screws loose, there's no doubt about that to work out that many days in a row, but it, it just helps me center. It helps me focus. It helps my awareness. So I've just, I've just kept it going. I'm a huge fan of our friends at Sport of Kings out in LA. And as a listener of this show, you've got to check them out. Sport of Kings is an LA based clothing brand that was started by two surfers and longtime friends. The story is incredible. They carry a wide range of premium tees, hoodies, sweats, caps, and more. And they're designed in house, folks, made locally in Los Angeles and Orange County. Samantha and Ava and Atlas say, Dad, you're either in a blue suit and white shirt or Sport of Kings. And they're right, that's about it. Don't forget, Sport of Kings is a homegrown brand focused on quality over quantity. And if you go check them out online at S-O-K-F-Y. So basically, Sport of Kings Forever Young, S-O-K-F-Y dot com and use the promo code PODIUM. You'll receive 20% off your entire order. Again, that's SOKFY.com and use the promo code PODIUM at checkout for 20% off. And now back to the show. Speak about that though. I've heard you, I've heard you coach and consult often about the power of the morning routine. Share, share your morning routine with our listeners. So I, I wake up very, very early, but it, it's for a purpose. And I would encourage everybody, however you set up your day from start to finish, be intentional in the environment that you create, the times, being respectful of time, showing up on time, doing the little things that people that you're leading, they're going to watch. I mean, that's part of being uncommon. Like you do what you say you're going to do all the time. So mm -hmm. I've designed my time, my future, my environment to how our team watches, how I show up to a meeting, a, a football team, how they show, uh, how they receive me when I walk into a room, all the way to how my children, you know, receive me when I'm with them in a room, right? If mm -hmm. we're in the kitchen and I'm making them breakfast. And so everything's very detailed. And so I wake up very early because I travel so much so that I can be intentional that my selfish time, which I have to have to be prepared to take on the day my selfish time to <clears throat> work out, to read, to journal, to prepare the day, to send the initial emails that line up our team for success for that day, that I have to get those things finished before I go wake the kids. I travel enough mm -hmm. and I don't get to wake the kids on so many mornings. So I want to wake up the kids. I want to make them breakfast. I want to take them to school. So I've created an environment where, yes, I wake up early, but it was a sacrifice that was worth it for me to get those two hours in the morning to be part of my kids morning to get them to school because there's a lot of fathers. There's a lot of mothers who travel a lot and they don't get that time. So I said, okay, I'm going to sacrifice my morning, be super intentional to get that time. And then once those kids are dropped off, I'm set to attack the day. Yeah. And, and uh, speak a little bit to calendar management and the way you prioritize what gets your attention. I've often found um, that the highest performers do the best at filtering out the white noise <clears throat> and ensuring that the only things that get on their calendar are things that align with what they're most obsessed about. And I think you're one of the masters, at least guys our age that are hustling and doing big things. You're one of the very best I've watched from the outside looking in. Well, I, I, I try my best and I appreciate you saying that now. Truth be told, I did have to hire one of my coaches. I did mention everybody, don't forget, I, I got two coaches. So I'm trying to figure some of these things out to really do a deep dive in how we were managing our practice, the things that I was leveraging. And I actually ended up finding out this year, it was very awakening for me. <clears throat> there were things that I was leveraging that I was supposed to be doing. And then there huh. were things that I was doing that I should have been leveraging. So as much as, yes, I'm detailed and very diligent with my time, and I was organized, productive, we were growing, we were still able to get better. And so we were actually able to shift some of the things by just taking a step back. Because for all of us, you get moving so fast, you think what you're doing is right, 
what you're doing creates growth, but you maybe can grow even faster. And it, it, it was so eye opening. Laura Pierce has just been a just mm. a godsend for me. 15 years I've worked with her. And it's just incredible how she can see things that I'm unaware of that then cause a different level of focus. So I appreciate you saying that. But to me, it's like a constant work in progress, because if we ever become complacent, if we're never looking for that little edge, how are we going to continue to grow? And so for me, it's it's the chase of that that constant growth. What uh, you're it it seems from the outside looking in, you're always moving fast. You're very hard charging. You're very intentional. You're all about execution. How often are guys at your level taking a minute to to hit pause, to hit time out and go through thoughtful, thorough, comprehensive strategic planning with your team? Uh, well, for, for me, and I'm actually I'm excited that you bring that up. Let me answer the question with an offer and opportunity on October the 26th. Our company is actually going to be providing an opportunity. It'll be like a 2023 power hour. And there's mm. some beliefs that we've established from how we've helped clients plan over the last 15, 16 years to plan early, to get excited for next year, to then pull the behaviors and the goals of next year into this year to actually finish with more momentum, more, uh, just a stronger level of finish, more results, but then go into next year with a bigger pipeline, more momentum and bigger opportunity. So I'm excited. You all can come to our Instagram page, just go to the website. You'll find different ways to get in contact with our team to get signed up for that. We'll be releasing all kinds of information. But to, to answer the question um, now for me, because I wanted to give to all of you, I always plan in October. And it's for that very reason is because I think far too many people, they wait till December to plan, you know, or somebody will call me, we're going to bring you to our planning day in February. I'm like, mm -hmm. in February, <laughs> wait a second. Like, how are you doing a planning day in February when you're in the second round of the 2023 fight? You know, like that doesn't make sense to me. So I want to encourage people plan early. And that's what I've done. And it, it just gives a different level of thinking and momentum. And during that planning session, <clears throat> that's where we intentionally plan the vacations for the next year. And what's huh. the time that I'm going to take off with the family? I was challenged this year from a dear friend of mine to take off more time in the summer. He had me on his podcast and he was asking me a bunch of questions and we get off of, of the podcast and he's like, it sounds like you want to spend more time with your family in the summer before things get crazy with football season. So let me just ask you a wild question. Why aren't you going to do that? <laughs> yeah. You know, and I start making excuses like, well, I've got this, 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 and this, and it's just, it's nuts. And then I, I ended up taking the time and it was, it was incredible. Yeah, I was going to say, you you actually, this is the first time in a few years that I can recall where you said, hey, yeah, I'm actually not in Missouri for a few weeks in a row. <laughs> yeah, it was, it. We, we ended up renting a house in Laguna Beach for three straight weeks. Um, it was such an enjoyable experience for our family. I mean, I turned down, it was four or five speaking engagements. People are like, you, you really can't do that event? And I said, no. I said, unfortunately, this is I'm spending the time with my family. I, I'm going to do a handful of things over Zoom during the week and things I'm responsible for, for coaching and consulting contracts, but as little as I possibly can to get as much family time as I can. We've already booked for next year for an entire month. That's awesome. And I just, I found that for me, it was such a needed time. I'm not getting that time back. You know, our, our yeah. children are the same age. So it's yep. always fun to catch up on what's going on in our kids' lives. And at 14 and at 12, like, I mean, think about that. Like we're not getting it back. I mean, our kids are going to be gone. And you and I have experienced loss of a parent at different ages in our lives. But, you know, no matter what age you lose somebody that that's close to you, at least for me, the first thing you think about is, man, I'm not getting that conversation back. Yeah, that's right. So if I can control getting more of my children's time in the summertime, like my son's a freshman in high school. I, I stayed at Michigan State this summer. Like I didn't come home. Well, what if he falls in love with the school where he's at and doesn't want to come home? I mean, I'll encourage him to play golf or whatever he wants to do and enjoy the summers if that's what you want. But sure. I might have three more summers with my kid, with my son. Yeah. Take it. Take. So I, I was uh, I'm glad that you mentioned your time at Michigan State again, because I, I think it's a really special story. And I'm hoping we can take two minutes to have you really walk us through it again. You referenced it earlier, but. After multiple national championships, 
with Coach K in North Dakota State, and you're still with him now. Then with Alabama. We did, and- hey, we did knock off Oklahoma at Oklahoma last Saturday night. So let me just highlight that. They were number six. I mean, let's just let you get it straight here, Manny. <laughs> I'm glad you mentioned it. I'm, I'm not the statistician of, of college football I used to be. Um, but, it, you know, then then your your time with Alabama and, and what is, you know, the, the gentleman is probably the, the greatest college football coach of all time. And now you're reunited with your alma mater. And and Coach Tucker, how how special must that feel to you to be back home again, where you went to undergrad? And and can you share like when did you know it was going to happen? Because I got to uh, think it was it felt pressured. I got to think it felt like you were being interviewed. I got to think you had even a moment of insecurity, possibly. Like when did you know it was done? Also, the, l- let me speak to the um, emotion first, and I can <clears throat> I can give you a Please. couple of, of examples. So I was actually up at Michigan State last week, so I was with the basketball team as well as the football team. And at the end of basketball practice last week, Coach Izzo came over, and you know we're chatting. And I said, Coach Izzo, I said you have not lost your intensity in twenty five <laughs> years. I mean, literally watching him at practice. My freshman year was the first year they won the Big Ten, and he kind of joked, he's like, I'd like to think I've calmed down a little bit over 25 years. But, like, you see him with this intensity and this passion. And so for me, when I was sleeping, you know, outside of the Jenison Fieldhouse to get my tickets to be able to watch the team, I remember storming the court to hug him after we won the Big Ten. He didn't know who I was, and I was lucky to just get to the head coach for a hug. The place is going nuts. And then now to be at his practice and – you know, I'm sending videos and in touch with the players and spoke to the team before summer workouts started. It's, it's wild. It's surreal. And, you know, the, the couple of days before I, I finished with the basketball visit, but spending all the time that I've spent with the football program and coach Tucker and getting to know these kids. I mean, I've been doing something with the football program almost every single day since June, since they brought wow. me in. I mean, it's, it's conversations with coach Tucker or players sure. and, it's surreal to do that back at your home. And so it's been incredible. I I do want to highlight the story because it's, it's pretty wild um, how things unfold. And I I think sometimes let let me paint it or, or frame it this way. If I could, I think a lot of people in society, they want everything to happen so fast. And I encourage people to have aggressive patience. And I think Manny can attest to this. He knows this about me. I have patience to wait, but I can be aggressively patient, right? So do the things that are within your control. Take the action that's necessary before your opportunity. I mean, the number of times I got told no, the number of times people oh. tried to get me in with Izzo and with the football program. I mean, for I'm talking 10 plus years, yet it was Benny Fowler calling me and saying, hey, man, will you come and speak? at the event to honor Michael Sadler, the punter Mm, who tragically died all these years ago. Everybody listening, this story is going to blow your mind. And so I said, well, of course I'll come speak. He's like, well, what fee will you charge? I said, zero. I said, an opportunity to come back to my alma mater and speak in a powerful situation like this to honor this young man who I remember when he died, the tragedy was Sam Foltz from Nebraska, like these two young kids. Yes, I will come back. He's like, you're serious. I said, absolutely. And so it was really an act of just giving. It was an act of service. It was Benny, who I've gotten to know through you, just this great guy. Like, of course, Benny, I would love to do that. And I come back and who was sitting in the audience? Members of the football staff and the basketball staff. And of course, my guy, Manny. And it's just all that support was there and it all happened at the right time. And what's amazing about this is Mrs. Sadler, Karen Sadler, Michael's mom. When I accepted the invitation, she sent me an email. And when she sent me the email, I actually have the copy of the book here. So I'm going to show it to everybody. It'll highlight the story even better. She sent me an email. She said, you're not going to believe this. She said, when my son died, and so much of the foundation is based around the word legacy. She said, when my son died, like we knew we wanted to honor his legacy. So everything was around legacy, legacy, legacy. I Googled books on legacy. She said, your book on legacy is the first one that popped up. I bought your book in 2016. She said, look at the picture attached to this email. 
And Manny, it was a picture of my book, Leave Your Legacy. And it was on her coffee table for the last six years. And for people who don't think that things happen in the right reasons, in the right time, I mean, that to me was a sign from God. Like, this thing has been orchestrated in 100%. this exact time frame. Yeah. 100%. And then when I had the opportunity to go there, it was the, you know, it was really all these Spartan dogs uniting to make it happen. And then it was, you know, the individuals from basketball and football that say, okay, that's a wrap. Like we're getting you in front of our guys. That's it. And to have the support of you being there to have the support of all those other individuals there, it was, it, it was really incredible, but I encourage everybody with that story. I didn't know she bought the book. I didn't know that. So yeah, right. There's all the, there's all these things that I was doing that were part of this opportunity being created. Yeah. So we don't always control the time frame of our opportunity, but we can control staying ready for all those opportunities. Yeah, that was an incredible day. I mean, obviously, I mean, you and Benny and the entire team just did a, a killer job. I mean, it was so well attended. I know they're looking forward to, to doing something again next year. Um, when, when did you know that it was done? Like when, when did you like get the feeling other than them saying, Hey, we really would like to hire you for both of the men's programs. But like it, when did you know that like, Hey, all this hard work, all of these things aligned, like this is going to happen. Uh, you know, the, the basketball program offered a, an invitation and, you know, Paul Davis, who's part of yeah. your team and the incredible things that you do. I just, I love Paul and how he shows up in life. And he, like I said, he's been subtly planting seeds for a long, long time. And, you know, David Thomas from your team, who, who has been part of planting those seeds. I mean, there's just all these seeds. And so basketball kind of came forward and said, we definitely want you to speak to the guys. But at the time, it was more football season. So then I got connected uh, through Darian Harris at the football program, direct to Coach oh, Tucker. Yeah. And Coach Tucker was kind of like, okay, like, how's this deal going to work out? And we ended up having a 90 minute zoom meeting. It was supposed to last 15 minutes and it ended up lasting 90 minutes. Wow. And you know, you kind of get to the end of that. And it was like, we know each other, right? Like we've been friends yeah. for a long time and it was just this bond. And I came and I spoke to the coaches and then it was the players and it was like the door just opened up and uh, it, it's been, it's been incredible. And, and, and here's what I'll share with you. You know, I can make the joke about making sure that you don't forget that we lost uh, Oklahoma or that we, that Kansas state beat Oklahoma and one of the biggest upsets, but here's the reality of the work that I do. I left Oklahoma stadium. So here I am, I'm on the sideline. I'm with the team. I mean, it literally a hundred people against 85,000 mm -hmm. and you knock off the number six team in the country. And I left the stadium that night and Michigan state had a really challenging loss last week to Minnesota. So mm -hmm. I'm then working on that. And I think, you know, that that's part of life, right? There's ups and downs and, you know, you have to stay true to the things that you're called to do, whether there's ups or downs, you know, and sometimes there's sacrifice. I mean, who wouldn't want to just party the night away? I mean, I'm not much of a party guy, but you get my point. Like, yeah. let's silence anything that's bad right now. And it's not that you don't enjoy the victories, but I think that's part of what I love about the work. It, it's the constant challenge. It's the constant pursuit of being able to help and to serve. You know, and and I and I'm glad I'm glad that you mentioned that because I think it's it's really easy from the outside looking in for us to just think like it's always great to be Ben Newman, right? And and especially because you show up extremely well, more often than most on the planet. Period. I mean, you just show up extremely well for the people that you care about, that you believe in, that you advocate on behalf of, that you support. You know, Real Leaders has had you as one of the top fifty most influential and powerful speakers in the world the last several years in a row. So people, again, they're saying, oh, this guy, this guy already made it. You still have two coaches. <laughs> You're still reading every single morning, probably more than me, probably easily more than me. You're, I don't know about that. You're, 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 you're still learning from others. You consume a lot of podcast material from some of the very best in the performance space. Who are you learning from right now? You know, for, for me, I always say, and I think a lot of people think this is a, a negative statement. I, I think it's positive at its highest form. Find a mentor that you'll never catch. And I honored John Gordon in Uncommon Leadership with a chapter about John. And, you know, John led me to Christ in 2008 after I met him when we were both speaking at a conference in San Antonio. And, 
you know, challenged me about my faith. It's like, I met this guy for 20 minutes the week before, and he calls me the next week, asked for my phone number from somebody that I knew, and he's challenging me about my faith. Yeah. Yet I was open to that relationship. And little did I know when I took that offering to dive deeper into my spirituality, that it was this mentor that would challenge me personally and professionally. And I, I tell John all the time, I say, don't stop. Do not stop. Because every time I have a conversation, what's going on in your life, he's like growing like crazy. And I say, keep going, keep going. Because it pushes me to have that never finished mindset, to not be complacent, to not say I've arrived. Mm -hmm. Where have I ever, I've arrived nowhere, right? I, I haven't arrived yet. There's all these people that provide an example that more can be done. And I know for some people, they might say, gee, slow down and enjoy it. Well, you're assuming I don't enjoy it. I love mm -hmm. this journey. I love the work. I love the commitment of riding the highs and lows with deep relationships that you build. Like, this is living life to me and the challenge of how great we can be. And then to find others we can, we can ride on this journey with to me, it's what life's all about. What are some of those common characteristics that you would say? Um, some of the characteristics that you find across some of these people that you've admired and have learned from the most, what are some of the things that bond them? I, I think they're authentic and vulnerable. You know, you typically find like the really successful people, they'll, they'll have the really tough conversations. They'll, they'll say what needs to be said. They also follow through with one of the great lessons I learned from Coach Saban at my time at Alabama. The way you do one thing is the way you do everything. Yeah. I mean, great leaders are going to do what mm -hmm. they say they're going to do. And great leaders have tremendous discipline, tremendous mm -hmm. discipline. And then I think the last thing is, you know, great leaders, they do what I call the unrequired. It's that little bit extra, right? It, it's the, the unrequired are the things that other people can't see. They don't want to do. They don't even want to talk about that the highest performers choose to make a priority. So they're not just disciplined in what they know they need to do, right? Like the, what their standard is. They do the unrequired, which is that little bit extra. And that little bit extra is what really creates the gap and the, the example of leadership. I'm finding more and more as I'm kind of just observing the world and getting older. I don't know if I'm just getting more pessimistic or, or uh, uh, about the situation, but I find that, you know, people have a hard time having in a candid, authentic, tough conversation. What, why do you think that is? And what, what are maybe a nugget or two, a piece of advice or two that you could share with our listeners to be more comfortable finding the courage to have tough conversations with people you really care about and respect? I think number one, acknowledging that fear, doubt, uncertainty, pain, we all go through those things. I don't care who you're reading about on the internet that you think that's not the case. Like we all go through it. I mean, I've got personal challenges, professional challenges. I've had so many deep conversations with Mandy about personal things, professional things, right? It's, it's having those people in your life where you can have those real conversations and knowing the right people that you can start to have those conversations with, right? There's no, there's no, it's not, you just take out a fog horn and say, okay, Manny encouraged me to be courageous. I'm just going to let the world know this is what's going on. I think you have to find your voice, find the right timing, find the right setting, find the right mentors, find the right confidence, like find your way to release those fears, doubts, and uncertainties and talk about them. It might start with one person. It might start with your best friend since you were five years old. And that's the one person you can fight in. Then let it be that one person. You know, some people, it might be more. But the reality is you got to find that person. And at some point in time, whatever it is that holds you back, you have to make that choice to just let it go. Talk, talk about that. I've heard, I've heard you. I mean, I, I, you know, you, you coached and consulted me on, you know, letting go of the things that are holding me back, the weights that are pulling me down. Speak about that a little bit. What are some of the most common things you see very aspirational, hard charging, hardworking people uh, being held back by? Are there any common themes or examples you can share? Yeah, I mean, as tough as it is for many people to hear, you know, oftentimes what holds us back from being ourselves is a lack of discipline. It's easy to make an excuse, right? Well, my company's doing X, right? We could talk to Cindy and Cindy runs a company doing $50 million of revenue and she can act like everything's going great. But if she's undisciplined in her focus with her family, if she's undisciplined in her workouts, if she's undisciplined in her nutrition, she's not going to perform at her highest level. So mm -hmm. fantastic that your company's doing 50 million. 
But I'd be willing to bet you if we can button up your nutrition, button up your health, button up your focus at home, you'll get the 75 million and then 100 million. And so I think sometimes people think, well, I'm successful. I don't have to do those things. They don't realize the next level of their success is actually enforcing yourselves to become disciplined in the areas where you lack discipline. Wow. The, um, I, I've heard you actually speak on this topic a few times when I've watched and listened to your podcast, The Burn. <clears throat> I want to make sure we talk about that before, before we come up on the hour. Share the vision behind the podcast. You know, what really inspired you to say, you know what, I'm having these conversations every single day and there's golden nuggets and golden tickets and lessons in all of this. I'm going to create a platform to share these stories uh, with people so that they can live their greatest life by design. All right. So Manny's going to be mad at me for saying this because I know he wants to record it, which we will do a, a second go round <laughs> of the burn. But you were like one of the first five episodes ever, which was awesome. And we filmed it in person uh, in Detroit. It was awesome. So everybody yeah, go the back room was like, like yellow. <laughs> <laughs> go, go, go check out the burn. I mean, it, it is like Manny and I back in the day. I mean, that was probably geez, five, four, four or five years ago. Now we're, we're four seasons into it. So definitely go check out that episode. But how the burn started was my other coach. His name is Drew Hanlon and Drew's one of the oh. top NBA skills trainers in the world. And Drew and I are really close friends. He's another St. Louis. And, and we kind of had the idea years ago, we'll kind of coach each other. You know, you call me, it's your day. And then the next week we'll talk and it's my day. And I remember I was sitting in LA. I went out to see him train some NBA guys and, and do some work with him. And we're sitting in the lobby of the hotel and he's like, dude, you need to start a podcast. I'm like, man, I don't have time for a pot. And I gave excuse after excuse. And he's like, no, no, no. Stop with the excuses. Like you are starting a podcast and now tell me when you're going to start it. I'm like, dude, you're not listening to me. He goes, no, no, no. I hear you. I'm choosing not to listen. When are you starting your podcast? And I was like, all right, next week. I'm like, but who's my guest going to be? He goes, I don't care. You're the first guest. And I was the first guest. It was a solo episode. But he's like, you have to commit and start. And then he said, what are you going to be remembered for? Yep. And I, I went on this as I have a tendency to get excited and to share deep answers. And, and so I went on this dissertation. He goes, dude, like, no, I, like, that's like so long. Like, stop. That's way too long. What will you be known for? And I kind of gave another long answer. Ben, you're not listening to me. What will you be known for? And he looked at me and he goes, the burn. He said, you've been talking about this burn lately. And a lot of coaches and speakers that do what I do. They talk about why and purpose, but I've always felt they forget to talk about what I think is most important, which it's this underlying burn that ignites mm -hmm. your why and purpose that then causes you to be disciplined in your action. He's like, you've been talking about the burn. That's it. It's called the burn. Like your podcast is the burn. And I'm like, all right, it's the burn. And here we are four years later. And it's interesting that, you know, people will reach out and message and, you know, even for you, like it's. Okay, this yeah. podcast, The Burn, it's, it's, you kind of, that's what you become known for, and it's simple. And it, it's, been, it's been awesome for me to learn so much from the people that we've interviewed, from you to these professional athletes, to authors and speakers. It's, it's been a wild ride, and I, I know how much you enjoy the time you spend at the podium and on the microphone, and it's just, it, it, it's awesome getting to learn through that environment as well, but then being able to share that with an audience that, that gets to understand the importance of the burn. Yeah, I, I, I'll say the, um, the variety of stories you have shared <clears throat> from some of the top performers in the entire world. I mean, I'm just blown away at how much, how excited they are to get on there and have that conversation with you and share some deep dive and some lessons and, 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 and their story and their journey in life to where they're at today. That's been really incredible. What, what would you say is maybe one of the most memorable ones you've done in the last two to three months? Probably the one that uh, we're getting ready to release. And, you know, they're, they're all great. And I don't just great. say that. I mean, it, it really is so unique to kind of target people into this concept of the burn, which for a lot of people, it's unique to them. They've maybe called it something else, but they've always understood what it was. <clears throat> but we recently, um, in, in the last week or so, uh, by the time this runs, uh, Andrew Whitworth, the uh, future Hall of Famer from the Los Angeles Rams, who I had the opportunity to do some work with in, in, in you know, seasons where I, I helped the Rams and, and my work there. 
it, he's just extraordinary. I mean, Manny, it, it just the level of detail, the way that this man showed up in life, I don't want to give it away, but I mean, some of his yeah. answers, when I asked him about legacy at the end of the burn and some of the things that he thought about and some of the things that he did to be intentional with his action, to honor the people who worked for the Rams organization, not the players, not the stuff that you see on the field. Yeah. It was absolutely extraordinary. And I know a man that has meant so much to you growing up as a kid in, in Chi town and just the way he lived his life and his tragic passing far too early. But, you know, Walter Payton sweetness was such an incredible man. And Andrew Whitworth, you know, won the Walter Payton NFL man of the year award. I mean, it's, that's right. So to really hear what this man thinks about when most people just go, well, you know, he won three championships in high school. Right. He won a championship at LSU. Yeah. He won a championship. Like dude, he's, just, he's a hall of famer, but it's like, man, when you get to hear what makes these people who they are, it's truly remarkable. That's awesome. And so, I mean, I know you've done a ton of work in the NFL. What's another league right now that you're really focused on and, and wanting to grow your reach and your impact into? If there is one, you know, I, I'm diving, you know, much deeper in with Michigan State basketball. I, I was actually a basketball player. A lot of people think because I've done so much in football that I was a football player. I, I wasn't. I played one year of freshman football. I always tell the guys, like, I'm not a football player. I, I was a basketball player. I was a hooper. And so for me, like to be able to go back to Michigan State and really my work in sports, it's kind of a fun tie, was my high school basketball team. When my old coach called me, back That's in 2011 right. and said, Benny boy, these kids are underperforming. Will you come speak to them? That's how my work in sports started. So you talk about aggressive patients, you know, people see that I've won five national championships and been able to help all these Super Bowl champions and all these, like you see, that's where I am today. But it started when I said yes for free for my high school basketball team. Like people have no patience these days, like be willing to serve for the right reasons and stay disciplined in the pursuit of that service. And I promise you those big doors will open, but to now be helping coach Izzo 25 years later, it, it's just, it's, it's wild. And, you know, he doesn't need that much help from me, but the, the opportunities that I've been given and the ones that will lie ahead, every single window of opportunity to impact, to have a conversation with these kids, to send them a video. So they think differently entering training camp, all of it. It's just, it, it's special and I'm enjoying it. Yeah, I would say, look, and I, I know that we're on time right now, but I am um, that is probably one of the things that I admire most about you outside of you as a husband and a father and a man of Christ. I I just I think back to that article that was uh, released in St. Louis, and it's like, here's a guy going from speaking at his high school <laughs> to going to like the Super Bowl, like in the same month. <laughs> And it's like, it's like, seriously, like you are a strong example of what it means to never forget where you came from. And I've just always admired that about you. You know, I, you've done incredible things. And I love the fact that you still consistently create time uh, for all the places that meant something to you from your childhood. Well, I, I appreciate that so much. It's uh Rewarding to, to hear you say that. And uh, I just, I appreciate our connection. I appreciate your endless support over all these years and all the great things that we'll do together. Reminder, you can sign up mental toughness forum.com. Manny's one of the main presenting sponsors for next year. And it was an amazing event this year. Next year is going to be even better and uh, make sure to check it out. And Manny and I look forward to the opportunity to impact you next year through that forum. Yeah, folks. And look, uh, you know, uh, subscribe to The Burn. Uh, it's available on all the major platforms, Apple, Spotify. You can find them on YouTube. Uh, follow him at Continued Fight on Instagram. Buy Uncommon Leadership. I mean, it's it's literally one of the best books that's been released in years around leadership, habits, the mindset, what it takes to perform at the highest level. And then don't forget, the strategic planning workshop, the power hour that Ben and his team are hosting on October 26th. Ben, where can they find more information on that? So the best thing is to probably just stay tuned on the social media as we start to release it and, and announce the landing page. So if, if you go to Instagram and go on my link tree up at the top, we'll be able to link you to register there. 
And any final information or curiosities about Ben Newman speaking, coaching, consulting, the the next book that this 19 ACT score <laughs> is going to release, uh, uh, you can find it at bennewman.net. Bennewman.net. Ben, it's always a blessing and a privilege to be together. Love you, brother. I always Love appreciate our time and look forward to seeing you in person really soon. Love you too. Folks, thank you so much for listening. And thanks to my guest, Ben Newman. Again, for more info on Ben, you can follow him at Continued Fight on Instagram and learn more about him and his team at bennewman.net. If you like what you heard, please be sure to follow, rate, and review at the podium on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Post about the show on social media and tag us. We'll repost to share our gratitude and also consider telling a friend about the show. Friend to friend is the best way to get the word out about podcasts. I hope you enjoyed listening to today's conversation.